why is this uh, a thumbs up free agency? I'm going to give you the full screen treatment. Yeah. Oh, whoa. I'm, I'm going to give you the full screen treatment. I'm going to give you the full screen treatment for a minute. So go for it. Explain to me why this is a thumbs up because I've been really complaining about it and I think people are tired of it and would like to hear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge – so I outlined, right, there was no scenario that we were going to – that people thought the Niners would bring back those five players. Uh, let me move my camera this way. Let me <laughs> my dresser. Um, so there was no scenario where the, anybody thought the Niners were going to bring back those five players, right? That's special. That, to me, in and of itself is great cap management. It's a great job of them – pivoting mid-season, creating all that cap room and doing that. And number two, I feel like, look, there's you've carped on the offensive line question all offseason, okay? And there's one thing with the offensive line that the Niners have told you. It's been right in front of you the whole time. I made this point uh, on last Saturday when we streamed, and it, it's, it's, an, it's something that's been right in front of us. Every single offensive lineman on this team complained about the fact that they were seeing fronts that they hadn't seen all season. They kept saying that. Yeah. And when you see fronts that you haven't seen all season and your center makes your line calls, then your team is obviously going to make mistakes on, well, where should we where should we uh, slide protection? What should we do here? Based on all of those things, that hurts your defense. That Excuse me. That hurts your offensive line. Alex Mack is not going to be able to make, make those mistakes. Even if there's fronts uh, that the Niners didn't prepare for, Alex Mack has probably seen them. He's a Hall of Fame center. And I think the comparison is, if you remember what John Sullivan, Hall of Fame type center, did for the Rams when he came there in 2017, 2017, 2018, what he did for Goff, what he did for McVay, what he did for that offense, um, that's exactly what Alex Mack is going to do. I think locking up Trent Williams is huge. I think Trent Williams is a Hall of Fame, first ballot Hall of Famer. So I think that's massive. And Grant, the other problem we've discussed and we talked about this is the lack of leadership with Joe Staley gone. And people, everybody who hates, dislikes Trent Williams said, he's not a leader. He's not Joe Staley. My question was, how do you expect this guy to be a leader when he doesn't even have a contract? He hasn't played the last season and he's on a new team getting acclimated. Well, now he has his long-term contract. Now he's acclimated. Now he's set here. So now you have, Trent Williams and Alex Mack, I don't think leadership is going to be a problem next year. I think Alex Mack will bring leadership. I think Trent Williams is going to be a leader. I, 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 I don't get why people are upset about both of those signings. I think they were phenomenal moves by the 49ers. And the other thing is that I, I, I think you have to temper your expectations, okay? It depends what your expectations were for the 49ers coming into this offseason. Like, if you believe that the Niners were going to get Trent Williams, they were going to go get Yannick Ngakwe in a premium pass rusher. They were going to keep Jason Barrett. They were going to sign some big time corner to match with Jason Barrett. You're, you're nuts. That's not what was going to happen. They had this hand dealt, okay? They were a player in free agency because they managed the cap well throughout the season. And Prague Marathe does a hell of a job managing his contracts to the sense that the Niners never have to be cutting a lot of players uh, to be able to manage the cap in a situation like this. So because of that, what they were able to do, Grant, is that they were able to find and create a situation where they're going to be bringing back a very, very good football team next year. Now, how far they go with that football team? Well, that's a question mark on the quarterback position and Jimmy Garoppolo's health. But everything around Jimmy is going to be, once again, pretty damn good. And they didn't lose a lot of assets doing it. OK, well, that was very that was very uh, compelling, uh, persuasive. Let me just tell you my concerns, I guess, questions, and tell me what you think. So I look, I, I didn't think they could bring all these players back. I was very pessimistic. We talked about it for weeks. I always thought they'd have to choose between this guy and that guy. It'd be impossible. You got to give her Jimmy. The way they finessed it, the way they created space with D Ford, it was very impressive. Very impressive. They definitely ended up creating much more cap space than I thought they'd have. And especially relative to the rest of the league, it put them in a power position. My question here is how they chose to use their cap space. They chose to bring it back, run it back. Bring back Tart, bring back Tr Trent, everyone. And the two new additions that, that matter, really, are Samson Ebu Ebucom, who I really like. I mean, he's a hell of a player, and he's 26. So I like that. I think they upgraded. He kind of seemed like he – I mean, he replaces D Ford, who didn't play last year. And I don't he think replaces, he replaces D Ford. Nobody well, he gives you something. He, he, he approximates him. He gives you – that's what I meant. He, he, he fills that spot in the rotation. And he fills a spot that Kerry Hyder was giving you. I, I like the signing. The other signing, Alex Mack, you laid out a good point. He is almost 36. When the Rams got Sullivan, he was 31. 
So my only question with Mac is where is he at? What does he have left? Because all the – I haven't watched that much of the, him from last year. Okay. I mean, but all of the advanced metric sites, Sports Info Solutions, PFF, we're down on him. So I'm just curious to see what he has left. I do think yeah. he'll be an upgrade from whatever they had last year. I, so again, I think that was a great point. Why did they choose to spend their cap space on bringing it all back as opposed to because there's only two real new additions to the team? What, my question is, what could they have brought? Right, that that's the big. We question, have to right? lose if you want. You have to level. choose. Yeah, if like Alex Mack, the best they could have gotten, and he's still, in my opinion, he's still a very good center. Now he's not the best center in football, definitively, like he was four years no. ago. But he's still no. a very good one. He's a top ten center. And the two centers they could have gotten, Corey Lindsley and then the Rodney Hudson shock, those two guys were priced out of their range. There's no way the 49ers could have made a move on either of those two well, guys. Well, it won't bring back someone like Trent Williams that creates other options. You could sign I, a I've, I've seen that. I've seen that. And I, I saw a scenario where people were talking Alejandro Villanueva. I saw yeah. a scenario on Twitter where people were talking Riley Reef. That's right. mind-numbing to me. Riley Reef and Alejandro Villanueva combined with Lindsley do not compare. Do not compare to Trent Williams, Alex Mack. The difference between Trent Williams and Riley Reef, and the difference between Trent Williams, especially current Alejandro Villanueva, who cannot run block, who cannot run block. The most important thing that the Niners look for in their offensive linemen is like the difference between the, it, I don't even know. Give me a vast. It's a Grand Canyon. It's massive. I, I think that needs to be put in home because I don't think people realize how good Trent Williams is. The, now, the questions with Trent Williams are outside of football, right? Their age and their and and it's health, right? He he doesn't price. he hasn't he hasn't price. I, I I just think he this is this is Walter Jones, this is Jonathan Ogden, this is Tyron Smith, this is David. They never Bakhtiari. made money like this I'd though. Pay him. David Bakhtiari just did. Well, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. How old is David Bakhtiari? He's 29 or 30. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just get look, here's the way I look at it. I was talking here's the way I look at it with Trent Williams. Um it's surprising that the highest paid offensive lineman is 33. Usually someone getting that record kind of a contract would be 27, 28. And I know he has a sterling reputation. So I get it. I went, like when the Chiefs went after him, I was like, okay. I mean, they just lost the Super Bowl because they couldn't protect Mahomes. I get the logic. It's like, well, maybe if we get Trent Williams, that's the difference and we're back and we win the Super Bowl. Even though I think a probably, pro I would say probably don't do that. Like you could get another improvement, but I get it where the Chiefs are coming from. They're looking for that last piece. Okay, the Niners got Trent Williams. He's back on the team. Where are they? Where do they stand? Are they where do they stand now? I they they still have one more big question mark to answer, and they haven't answered that question on who's their quarterback going to be next year. See, that's and the thing. The, if you have Mahomes and you're one offensive lineman away, go for it. But if you got Jimmy, then like, what's the point? The question is, we don't even know if Jimmy's the guy, right? Because okay. they haven't made okay. moves to confirm that Jimmy's the guy, okay. but they also haven't made moves to say he's not. So okay. that entire thing is shady. But I think okay. the rest of this roster. I don't think people realize how good this defensive line is going to be next year, Grant. Like, because I know there's a lot of players on this defensive line you like. I know you're a DJ Jones fan. I know I you're Kevin a Kevin Givens. Givens. Yeah. I know you're a Kevin Givens fan. I know you like Street. Bosa right? is so a hell of a player. Players. If he's good to go, we don't really know what's up with that. Right. So you have Bosa assume. Street. So I mean, this offensive line I like is going to go Sosa Obama, eight, whatever you call him. Right. Eb Samson yeah. Ebucom. He calls so, himself Sosa. Yes, Bosa yeah. and Sosa. Yeah. So yeah. you so I, I just think there's gonna be a ton of depth across that defensive line. So is it gonna be as good as 2019? Hell no. No way. 2019 defensive line, one of the great defensive lines in NFL history. Is it gonna be a top five defensive line in the NFL? Absolutely it will be. Let me just ask you point blank, because I guess what I'm trying to say is okay, you brought back Trent Williams. That's a that's a big move. That's Making a 33-year-old left tackle the highest paid offensive lineman of all time is a move that a team that expects to contend makes. So my question to you, Vish, is do you expect this team to really contend next year? Uh, I have to wait and see, but okay. I, I absolutely – open -minded. I believe You're open-minded. I, I believe in Kyle Shanahan, and I believe okay. in this roster. Now, okay. do I have some questions about the quarterback? I absolutely do have some okay. questions about the quarterback. But, yes, I, I think that – this isn't – I don't think this is a run it back, keep it the same situation. Like, I truly believe when you look at the rest of this market, outside of Ebukam, who I thought there were better edge rushers but not at the same price as Ebukam, I don't think the Niners had an opportunity to get anybody better. Like, the left tackles in this market, Trent Williams, I, I, I don't know why people don't get this. This is a first ballot Hall of Famer. 
you're not going to get better than a first ballot Hall of Famer. I, I said this on my uh, stream the, a couple of days ago. There are some players where I, I'm a big – Grant, you know this. I'm a big value chart guy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fan of the value chart. I, I'm a big fan of you pay this these positions. You only pay these people this much. But there are certain players that are to hell with the value chart. Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Julio Jones, those kinds of players. This mm -hmm. is one of them, Grant. I don't think people realize, like – David Bakhtiari is as good as this guy is a pass blocker. This guy is the best run blocker in the NFL. David Bakhtiari can't even run block like him. And David Bakhtiari is going to be a Hall of Famer. I, I don't think people realize how special this guy is. And I, that's why, you know, yeah, $23 million, it's really a three-year deal. The, 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 the three years uh, after that are really up in the air. And those three years, I think this is how the Niners structure their deals, right? Parag is very good at this. You get paid when the Niners are convinced that you're going to be on the team, right? So they're convinced that Trent Williams is going to be their left tackle for the next three years. So they they know he's they've kind of paid him that way. After that, it's up in the air. His future's up in the air. And if he's playing great, then sure, we're willing to pay you. We can restructure you, all of that. But I, I just, I think the deal was good enough. I, I just think it had to be done. Can we agree that uh, ultimately the way this deal will be judged, for it to be a success, he'll have to play... 95% of his games the next three years. Yeah. And the Niners will have to basically be in the playoffs for this to be worth it. Oh, I see the playoffs thing. I mean, when you're talking worth, like they weren't going to, if like, okay, what, what's the point of saving money? Like by, by not signing him, it's not like they, they had a better, he gives them the best chance to make the playoffs. Now, if they make bad moves at other spots, that's their fault. That's not Trent Williams fault. And that's not their fault for paying Trent Williams. It's like the, Carolina Panthers, right? Carolina Panthers paid Christian McCaffrey, what, $16 million? Like, they had to pay Christian McCaffrey. He's their franchise player. Cam Newton just walked. There's business reasons, and there's all kinds of reasons like that. Now, if they don't make the playoffs once with Christian McCaffrey making $16 million and Christian McCaffrey is still balling out, how is it his fault that they didn't make the playoffs? Or that, that why is the deal a flop if they didn't make the playoffs? They wouldn't have why made it allocate that money anywhere else. Just because it, it just seems to me that you're so all in with, with, you know, so much money tied into a guy who's 33, 34, 35 moving forward. The alternative would be to, you know, go younger, develop someone, build for a future. So if you, if you can't so, at least be in the playoffs, it's like, it's not Trent Williams fault. It's just, it's like, it didn't make sense for well, you. Well, okay. But if, if they can't be in the playoffs, then that means that this off season, it just wasn't about signing Trent Williams. They shouldn't have signed Alex Mack. They shouldn't have right. brought back Brett, who's 30 plus. They should right. have cut Garoppolo, and they should have just blown it all up. And get a well, little younger, yeah, an, but they don't, that's, that's not what they want to do. That's not an option for this coach right now. Okay. That's not okay. an option for this GM right now. They couldn't okay. have done that. Okay. I was thinking maybe they could because they got those extensions, but really, even if with an extension, you don't have that much job security in the NFL. Coming off a of six and ten year, you got to got to win. The, ex the expectation I mean, is to win. Grant, he, he's, had, I, he's been here for, what, four years, and three of them have been losing seasons. Yeah, he's got to win. Even with the exception, it's just it's tough to justify. Uh, real quick, there was a, 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 a question I lost, a $5 donation saying, do the Niners need a number one receiver, in your opinion? No, no. no. They have uh, one. I like Richie have... James, too, as a number three receiver. I really don't – but we're going to get into what the Niners are going to do in the, in the top three rounds or what we, what we guess. Uh, Joel says, with Jimmy at the helm and this new and improved offensive line followed up with a great defense, if they stay healthy, do they have a chance for the Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the question, Vish. If they stay healthy with what they currently have, Jimmy included, do they have a chance at the Super Bowl? Yeah, but I, I think, uh, in my opinion, like eight teams have a chance at the Super Bowl. Fair. There's a lot that needs to go on uh, to Fair. even predict that. 